Ted King, welcome to my garage. I wanna take you on a quick tutorial about how I go about choosing tires. Now look, a qualifier to kick things off. This is not my actual garage. This is a rental house. Laura, the kids, and I are out here in California in late winter, early spring, soaking up some good weather, doing some work here in Healdsburg. And so when you look behind me and you see some tools, saws, jigs, all sorts of woodworking material, those are not ours. The bikes, those are ours. There is quite a bit of decision making that goes into choosing tires for both me and Laura, and so that's what this video is all about. Now, admittedly, I have been working with Renee Harris for four years now on an official basis. I've been working with them for close to seven years on an unofficial basis. I was using their tires well before we were aligned in a partnership. Needless to say, I thought they made the best tires in the business. They make it really simple for me, and that's why I went about choosing them as a sponsor. All right, there are four main criteria that I look at when I go about choosing a tire. The first is circumference, the second is tread type, the third is width, and the fourth is the tire casing. Let's go through those one at a time. Circumference. Study after study have shown that a 650B wheel is just as fast as a 700. So I don't need to go into the nuance of why I would choose one or the other. My specific reason is because I look after a whole bunch of bikes. My road bikes, my gravel bikes, Laura's road bikes, Laura's gravel bikes. For simplicity, because there's often a lot of interchanging of wheels, I've tended to rely on 700. 650, there might be the misconception that they are not as fast because you're often paired up with a wider tire and a wider tire is going to give you a softer ride and a softer ride is thought of as slower because we're used to the rigidity and 120 PSI and, and 700 mil tire or 700 C tire rather and thinking that is fast. That is the only thing I can think of because study after study, again, as I've said, says that they are equally fast tires. We'll leave it at that. Don't forget, this is the Ted King guide to choosing tires. This is my reason, let you choose yours. The next piece of criteria is gonna be tread type. So let's think about it. It's pretty binary. You either have a slick or you have a knobby tire. The purpose of a knob is to be the teeth that bite into the mud, the dirt, the grass, the snow. Notice how I didn't say pavement. Knobs can't bite into pavement. Knobs can only bite when they have something to grab onto. As a result, a wide slick will often provide more grip because you have a bigger, bigger footprint, a bigger piece of surface that is touching the ground. So that's why you'll often see me at gravel races with really hard hard pack or a little bit of pavement. You'll see me on a wide slick. What has been great about the very simple knob pattern of Renee Hearse is they offer shoulder grip. There are the knobs on the shoulders that riders want because intuitively when you take a corner, you want to make sure you're biting into the ground. Just as you want to have a fast rolling piece in the center. With a lot of knobs equally placed throughout the center of the tread, you have the same amount of rubber on the ground at all times. I mentioned it a tiny bit there, we're talking about width. Now my general rule of thumb is ride the widest tire that your bike will allow. Similar studies to circumference as width show that wider tires are not slower. People think of them as slower. Again, it's probably because a wider tire is a softer ride and a softer ride has the connotation of being slower. Is it? No. Wider tires allow for lower pressures, allow for more comfortable rides, allow for better riding, better traction, better cornering. Frankly, it doesn't make any sense why the world hasn't gone super wide. I think we still live in an antiquated world of cycling. So, when I first got into cycling, 21 to 23 were pretty much the standard widths that we were using. 25 started to come around, 26 has started to come around. Fast forward to the modern age, Renee Harris's most narrow tire is a 26. The most narrow tire that I use full stop is a 32. So they range all the way up to a 55. Again, we're working in the world of slicks right now. If I can name all of these tires in order, I think I, I, I deserve a prize. You got Cayuse, 26, Chinook is a 28, Stampede's a 32, Bon John's a 35, uh, Barlow is a 38, Snoqualmie's a 44, Hatcher's a 48, and Antelope Hill is a 55. I think I got that right. Bonus points if I did. 
So my road bikes, these days road bikes are, are offering tremendously wide allowances and clearances. So 32 is what I'm running. It took Laura a, bit, a little bit of time, but she's now running 32s exclusively. It's freaking awesome right here. I mean, good grief, look at that bike. It looks amazing. Again, more comfort, better cornering, better traction. Let's just, let's, let's think. It purely makes sense. Well, let's go down to casing. In the Rene Harris offerings, you have Extra Light, Standard, Endurance, and Endurance Plus. Let's operate on either ends of the spectrum. Extra Light are very supple. They are very soft, they are comfortable, they are lighter. They offer a very supple, comfortable, smooth ride. On the opposite end of the spectrum, is Endurance Plus, which is not a rigid ride. It's not a tough ride. It's not a hard ride. It's still incredibly supple tires in the grand scheme of tires in general. However, I call these tires bulletproof. They're, they're what I use when I absolutely do not want to flat. So this day and age, races are so cutthroat. If you get a flat, your day is almost guaranteed to be over. So I'm running Endurance Plus very, very often in races. But then I go ahead and talk to a guy like Jan, founder of Renee Harris, and he's running extra light almost exclusively. I'm a bigger human being. I think I put a more pounding onto the tire where I'm, I'm often racing at higher speeds and having to take corners and pick lines and do things that might not be what the masses are doing because I'm going single file through a pace line. If you have a better ability to choose your, uh, choose your line, you're gonna have a better ability to miss rocks, to miss all the sharp things that might cause a flat. So then enter the two middle ends of that spectrum. You have standard and endurance. Endurance is not quite as durable as, as endurance plus. Standard is not quite as supple as extra light. Trial and error, try what works for you. You wanna start somewhere, you probably start with standard. That's probably a standard tire and a good choice. So if we wanna dive into the specifics of a course, uh, I ran a 44 slick Snoqualmie pass in my most recent Unbound. The year was 2021. I didn't go last year because of the birth of our son. It was a dry course, that's a really hard packed course with a heck of a lot of straightaways, not a ton of need for, for corner knobs or anything like that, so I rode the 44. I was one of very few people on slick, and in 2022 you saw a lot more people going there. Other courses that are gonna require or, or tend to rely more on a slick, something like Mid-South, basically, where things are often dry, often straight, often hard pack. Again, mass generalization. Those are uh, the races that are gonna rely more on a slick tire. As you go deeper into the woods, I'm thinking on either end of the country. I'm thinking playing around in Vermont, Vermont Overland, Rasputitsa. Um, races all throughout the Appalachians. Again, this is gravel, but you know, this is probably more of a gravel guy than a, a road tire guy. Uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, California. Uh, I mean, a lot of these races that are in and out of the woods, in and out of the forest, you have loamy places to grab, to have a little bite. Thanks to that tread, that's where you're gonna want to have a treaded tire. Let's now switch over and think about choosing the width of a knobby tire. Again, the same rule of thumb basically applies. The wider the tire, in my opinion, the better. So when I first started riding, uh, major clearances weren't a thing. So I was often on the 38 Stella Coom. Now fast forward to the present, I'm almost exclusively using a 42 Hurricane Ridge. However, thanks to the introduction of the 44 Mana Stash, I've been using that for the past week exclusively on road, off road, and the tire absolutely rocks. If I'm doing an incredibly rocky race, I think in particular of Big Sugar, that was a race that I ran a 48 Nobby. My clearances were minuscule, but because the race is so jarring, so sharp, so uh, difficult, but you still want a place to grab to go up and down the, the, the many steep hills, that's where I wanted a 48. I was running the risk of having the super narrow clearances. If we had mud build up, that would have been a problem. If I had had any uh, issue with, with tire coming out of, tr I mean a wheel coming out of true, that would have been an issue, but I've basically never had either of those. So that is a place that I went with a 48. So where does that leave us? As much as there are four pieces of criteria to choose from, that presents a whole 
wide variety of options, right? Here's what I recommend. Put the widest slick tire on your road bike. You're gonna enjoy that. I've run 35s because my, I have uh, the Cannondale Synapse allows that and 32s for my standard Evo and it's amazing with clearance to spare. When it comes to knobbies, I would recommend the Manistash. It's brand new and it's freaking awesome. It has the noise canceling technology so it's still a silent ride going down the road. It looks awesome as a 44. There's still clearance to spare. I'm gonna ride that tire a ton this year. If I'm doing a fast race that does not require those cornering knobs, it doesn't require knobs at all, then I'm gonna use something like a 44 Snow Qualmy. How do I remember that? Because I don't wanna use the Snow Qualmy in snow. That's just always somehow stuck in my mind. But a 44 Slick has huge footprint on the ground and it's something that I use often with confidence and love it. You know the best part about this whole thing? It's up to you. You're gonna buy a tire and you're probably gonna have a pretty decent ride. From there, it's only a matter of picking the tire that's gonna be the right nuance to make your ride even better. There's a lot of subjectivity to it. There's a lot of objectivity to it. These are my tips. These are the things that I recommend. And I hope that you can use some of this advice in order to make your ride better. That's all I got. Feel free to comment below. I might even be able to give you tips and tricks depending on the different races that you're going to do. Say, hey, Ted, I'm going to Iceland. What tire should I use? Man, a stash ridge. All right, that is what I got. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. It's as simple as that.